Hello everyone. Hope you are doing well. I'm going to talk about not so new topic that is Azure policy. But I wanted to focus on few things which are not commonly explored. And I will probably note down each one of them which I'm going to talk about. What I'm going to talk about is that how can you start with with policy so if you are using azure policy can do a lot of magic so you can just think about using this policy um, quite frequently so let me just say this and then second thing what i'm going to show how can you implement DevOps and then we'll talk about how to export existing policies right so let's dive deeper into each one of them to understand how things are placed together okay so let's go here and let's first show you how the policy looks like if you're going to Azure portal and you search for policy you'll find all the policies which are default available here so we call it policy it's a service and you see that overview getting started which will point you to the documentation and then how to build that uh, compliance related policies remediations etc but you also have not section called authoring where it talks about the definitions so policy definitions are in form of JSON file. So if you happen to see that loading up, and if you just open one of the policies, any one, you'll find the definition looks like this. So essentially, you have a couple of text files with you know, policies defined uh, in form of JSON, and you can leverage the existing policy library shared by the Azure engineering team in a GitHub repository called Azure slash Azure policy. So we go to github.com slash Azure slash Azure dash policy. You come into this uh, GitHub repository, which is a public repository, and you can fork it. You can look into the samples and you can just pick up anything, let's say computer related policies and allow custom images. And if you just look into the Azure policy.json file, it talks about the same JSON file. Not only that, if you go back to this policy, it also gives you a bit of um, knowledge around how you can enable this policy into Azure. Now, there are two step activity always. First, for any custom policy, you create the policy in Azure portal. Second, is that you implement the policy in the azure portal after the policy is created so that's a two-step activity so in the first one you can see that it is using powershell new az policy definition gives a name gives a description and a display name and then it passes the the file as a policy so you can either pass file or you can pass the whole json string uh, in in this uh, option so here it is passing the file file is easier because then you have the source control available you can actually um, keep track of who made what changes and go back into the history and if you have a parameter file associated you can always assign that so that first line is going to create a policy at a subscription scope right so you basically get the policy created at a subscription level if you want to create policy um, you can also set the resource policy scope to a resource group right so you can see that um, get az policy you can even do it at the management group level so depending on where this policy needs to be applied you apply it either you apply it at the management group level which is top one or you put it in the subscription level or you do it in the resource group level so you have multiple different layers 
after the policy is defined, you define the parameters, right? Uh, if you do not have any parameter, just forget this step. But then you as assign this policy here. So that's why I open this portal because it helps you define that. So you, if you have the policy file created, you will be able to see that policy coming up over here. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you a, a better way of handling a lot of um, custom policies in an enterprise scenario. So you should not be manually editing a file, changing the file and applying that. Rather, you should create some sort of uh, uh, process around it. So what I'm going to do is that I will open my Azure DevOps. So I'll say Azure DevOps. And the moment I open the Azure DevOps, I sign in here, takes me to the login page. And I'm logged into Azure portal. I'll say DevOps. Takes me there. So let me close few additional windows which are not required. And I keep this as a sec last one because that's what we are going to open my Azure. So you can have your own Azure DevOps. It's a free of cost. So what I have done is that I have this Azure DevOps organization. I have a project, right? Uh, this is the project. You can create a new project. So that's all. And then I have a repo, which basically is the same GitHub. So I bring in the GitHub content here automatically. And then what I can do, I can define a pipeline. And now let me create a pipeline. So let's say I want to create a release pipeline. I want to create a new one. So let's say I want to create a new pipeline. And what I'm essentially I'm going to do is that I'm going to choose a template. And in this, I will type policy. And that says Azure policy deployment. If you apply, it creates a deploy. Azure policy. Okay, so you can see that it is now having one job, two tasks, and these are the two tasks I need to configure. First of all, I need to say which Azure subscription. So I need to log in there. So if I go ahead and then choose the, the already entered credential, which is possible in Azure DevOps, you can create that. It'll show up in the drop down. And you just pick up. If you do not have, you can just go ahead and into the project setting and add that uh, login either through SPN, managed identity, um, or the token base. So I say go ahead, and then this one is what I'm going to use. And then the first step is create Azure policy. And as I said, that it uses PowerShell script. So this is a PowerShell based one. If you happen to see that, I, if I have the script in my mm, repository, I can use the script file. I can also use the inline script. Now, when I use inline script, it gives me a box and I can just type the inline script over here. So if I go back and copy this script, right, and come back over here and paste it, that's the inline script. So it basically essentially will run the PowerShell script written here in the box. That's not how I prefer, but for the demo, it, it's good, right? And then what happens here, you come to this assign as your policy. You also have an option to define an inline script. So you can just hide that and go into the thing and define this inline policy over here. So both of them are defined since I'm I'm not going to use parameter. I can use remove parameter, but just assume that you are using it. So you have that. You can even pass the full policy inside this inline script under this policy um, parameter. So dash policy, single quote, and put the content of the JSON over here. You can also do that, right? 
And once you are done with that, I'll go back to already created um, pipeline. You basically get this pipeline ready, right? So that's what I created with thing. And you can just hit on redeploy. And then it will start connecting to your Azure subscription. Uh, we'll try to deploy things over there and then it'll do things in a DevOps way. So you can build whole workings of your workflow in this Azure DevOps, which allow you to do that. Now, one thing while it is trying to do, I want to show you one quick option. I have so many, let's say, policies available. You can see the list of policies here and you can just filter them or choose what kind of policy you want but one of the features it gives is the ability to export the definition right and what it essentially asks you to sign up uh, or sign in to your github account if you're using enterprise scenario you use your enterprise github account if you are just testing it out like me use your personal github account but you sign in here and once you sign in then github will uh, ask you the permission right so let me say authorize i i just say and it's gonna go and try to log in if everything is fine now you can see that it is allowing me to <clears throat> go into the github and uh, choose where I'm going to export all these policy definitions from my Azure uh, subscription to my personal GitHub account. Now, you can choose the repository, you can choose the branch, you can choose the directory, and it basically will keep copying all the files, right? So that's one way of taking all your work, which you have done in the portal manually, back to your GitHub, and then start managing that from there, because that's the ideal way of managing it because it gives you an ability to go back to the history and see who has made what changes and if you have done some mistakes you can always retrieve the the previously working copy of the file right so it is the way to go so always always highly highly recommended and this is all about policy azure policy you know a lot more than me about azure policy but these are the key critical components from the, an operational perspective where you can think of um, running the Azure policy. So how can you start with the policy? Use Azure portal to look for it or go to the GitHub repo. Use the, you can also implement, let's say, your, your policies um, using DevOps. You can export an existing policies from the Azure portal to your GitHub, right? So that's all from my side. Thank you very much and thanks for watching.